In Exodus chapter 12. Yeah. In Exodus chapter 12, I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, Tell the whole community of Israelites that on the tenth day of the month, each man is to take a lamb for his family. One for each household, because it's about to be Passover, and they're going to take the lamb, and they're going to kill the lamb. So they're picking the lamb on the tenth of Nisan. They take this lamb on the tenth. Now, go down to verse 6. And it says, take care of them, or take care of the lambs until the 14th day. That's four days later. Till the 14th day of the month. When all the people of Israel, uh, of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. It says, then they are to take no, they are to take some of the blood and put it on the, the doorposts of, their, of the frame of their, of their homes. So now, they take the lamb on the 10th of Nisan, right? right? But they don't kill the lamb till four days later. Right. When did God decide that Jesus Christ would be the life giver to this world? He decided on the first day. Jesus, Jesus is already decided that God is going to give Jesus Christ to the world on the first day. But he can't kill his lamb on the first day. You understand? God can't, because why? Right here in Exodus it says, wait four days before you kill the lamb. So, so God waits one, two, three, out of time. To the whole world. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. So now, wow. if that doesn't clear it up, I can't help. <laughs> a day is a thousand years. Yeah. Now, let's answer this other question. This other question is, um, is there seven years in time left? Is there seven years reserved on God's time clock? Because we need to understand that once we get to 6,000 years, that means everything's done because on 6,001, God himself will be on his Sabbath day. Why? 6,001 is the beginning of the 7,000, so God has to rest. Right. Understand? So God's going to rest because that will be his Sabbath day. Right. But now we have to understand something. Right now, we'll go 5,993. Okay? We need six, seven more years to reach God's Sabbath day. We need seven more years to reach God's Sabbath day. But what is mentioned of in the seven years? What's going to happen in the seven years? The Bible talks about the tribulation. The Bible talks about a seven years that's coming upon the world that is going to be so bad. The Bible said it is the worst seven years of the history of all mankind. We are sitting here one week from Rosh Hashanah. Now, I'm listening to this Jewish guy argue this morning and say, I don't know what these Christian people are talking about. I have it on YouTube. It's on my phone. I'll let you see it. He said, Rosh Hashanah is an idiom. And he said, what's an idiom? An idiom is a form of speech. It's not, he's not saying nobody knows the day or the hour. He's saying, when he said nobody knows the day or the hour, it's an idiom for Rosh Hashanah. He said, when, he said all throughout Jewish history, when people are speaking of Rosh Hashanah, they say, on the day that no one knows. They speak of no Rosh Hashanah. So Jesus, by saying this, was telling them, this is when this is going to happen. Now, we are a week from Rosh Hashanah, which is also called... Um, 
the day of the wedding of the Messiah, which is also called the hidden day. And we are one week away from this day. It's also called um, the day of the coronation of the king. So all of this is consistent in this Rosh Hashanah day telling you about Jesus Christ. What about this seven years? Let's go to Daniel chapter 9. Listen, this is an emergency message. I am praying that, you know, people understand this and you tell somebody, hey, look, we've got to be on point. Rosh Hashanah is next week. We need to be telling people about Jesus Christ. We need to be praying for people because if Christ should blow the trumpet, and right now in Israel, they are, they are blowing trumpets every day. They will blow 99 trumpets during the month of Elul, what we call August, but on Tishri 1, they will blow the last trumpet. And that's what Christ is talking about when he says this thing will happen at the last trump, not the Revelation trumpet. You in Daniel chapter 9? In Daniel chapter 9, let's go immediately to verse 27. It says, he will confirm a covenant with the many for one seven. Talking about seven years. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of the temple, he will set up an abomination. What is an abomination? Something that God hates. Yeah. It says, he will set up an abomination. When? In the middle of the seven years. But he's saying here, he will confirm a covenant with the many for seven years. Who is the he that he's talking about? The Antichrist is coming to confirm a covenant. What kind of covenant? It's a peace covenant. And this is why we're looking in the news and we see Obama on the news this week. We are going to get the peace plan ready for Israel. We have a peace plan going on the same time a 7.4 earthquake hits Christchurch, New Zealand. I mean, if the evidence isn't overwhelming, what is wrong with people? This is no time to negotiate with sin. So he's going to confirm this covenant with the many for seven years. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, the Bible calls it, the, the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. Jacob is Israel. So therefore, this is the time of Israel's trouble. The seven years of tribulation is the time of Israel's trouble. It is not, it doesn't say this is the time of the church and Israel's trouble. Right. Because if we're still here, then both of us got some trouble. Right. But this is the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years of tribulation. So God is trying to get the world ready because they're about to experience the worst seven years that they've ever seen in the history of mankind. Amen. I'm talking about worse than World War I. Yes. Worse than World War II. Yes. Yes. They're about to experience this. And we have to warn them and tell them to get ready for this day. Amen. Now, we have a problem, and I'll, I, will, I will go to that problem later. But let's answer this question. Because we who are born again believers believe this. If you've been studying. We believe that, and this is crazy, so don't laugh when I say it. We believe that before the seven years starts, we're going to disappear. <laughs> See how crazy that sounds to somebody who don't know Christ? They go, uh-huh. Hey. Right. Thanks for telling me. No, I'm cool. I'm cool. Hey. Go to the Buddhist temple up the street. Disappear, huh? This is about as crazy as building a boat in the middle of the desert saying it's going to rain enough to lift the boat and actually ride on it. Right. Crazy. Got to know what a nut. 